Okay, in this video I want to talk about showing whether or not a vector field on R2 is conservative. And what the theorem says, it says let our vector field F be defined by PI plus QJ. It says we've got a vector field on an open, simply connected region. And all, um, well we'll talk about open, simply connected here in just a second. It says suppose it's uh, an open, simply connected region D. And suppose that P and Q have continuous first order partial derivatives. It says if the partial of P with respect to Y equals the partial of Q uh, with respect to X it, throughout our region D, it says then F is in fact a conservative vector field. So this will be the test that oftentimes you'll, you'll need to use in a calculus class. Um, what simply connected means is it basically means the region that you're, that you're looking at basically has no holes and is not into separate pieces. Um, so this top region would be considered simply connected. It's all kind of one whole piece. R2 is also simply connected as is R3. Okay, um, R sub n is simply connected. An example of something that's not simply connected would be these little regions down here um, that have little holes in them. So another example, for example, um, if we took R2 and we took away just the origin, um, if we took away the origin, I should write 0, 0, um, then you would have a hole in the plane and that would not be a simply connected region. So, but again, R2 is simply connected. So for, I've got three problems here. Let's assume that we're just looking at these on all of R2, and we, and we just want to know if they're con, um, conservative or not. So again, it says the part in front of the I part, that's what we call P, the stuff in front of the J part, that's what we label as Q, and it says we take the partial of P with respect to Y, Notice if we take the partial of P with respect to Y, we'll simply get 5. And then we have to ask ourselves, does that equal the partial of Q with respect to X? Well, the partial of Q with respect to X, well, if we take the derivative of 5X plus 4Y, that's simply also going to equal 5. So hey, in fact, those two partial derivatives are equal, and we would say that this first vector field is in fact conservative. Okay, so it is conservative. No big deal. Okay, so let's look at the second one here. If we take the partial of P with respect to Y, it looks like we'll simply get X e to the Y. Ugh. I said it, but I can't write it. <clears throat> so if we take the partial of this with respect to Y, we'll simply get X e to the Y because the derivative of e to the y is just e to the y. If we take the partial of the second part with respect to x, well, we'll simply get y times e to the x, but certainly those are not equal, so we would say this is not conservative. So pretty easy to show um, whether or not a vector field on R2 is conservative or not just by using this test. The only thing that's going to be tedious is just finding the partial derivatives in general. Um, so last but not least, if we take the partial of P with respect to Y, it says the partial of P with respect to Y. Um, if we take the derivative of cosine Y, that's going to give us negative sine Y. So we'll get minus 2x sine y. Then if we take the derivative of the negative y cosine x with respect to y, um, treating cosine x like a constant, we'll simply get negative cosine x. And now we have to again ask ourselves, does this equal the partial of q with respect to x? And I'm going to squeeze this underneath. So if we take the partial of negative x squared sine y with respect to x, we'll get negative 2x sine y. If we take the derivative of negative sine x with respect to x, we'll simply get negative cosine x. Hey, it looks like to me those are exactly the same, so since the partials are equal to each other, we would say yes, this vector field is conservative. Uh, one other thing to point out too, um, 
because in the definition it talks about p and q having continuous first order first order partial derivatives notice that all these partial derivatives are very kind of well behaved functions these are all continuous functions so the partial derivatives are going to be continuous um, but something maybe that you don't want to completely um, gloss over. So, all right. Um, in another video, I'm going to show how to how to determine whether or not a vector field on R3 is conservative. That's going to be a little more tedious, a little more work because you have to use what's called the curl. But again, nothing nothing too laborious. So, um, feel free to dig around and look for that one if you need to. As always, feel free to post comments or questions.